chess talk about. Uh, Ken Forey, everybody, make some noise. Cool. Wow. Have you been uh, in Niagara Falls? Uh, you been before? I've been here before. Okay. Uh, I think once, maybe twice, and I enjoy it. So, yeah. Good, good, Who good. doesn't? I yeah. Mean, this is a, a very famous location. I think the first time I really took a great look at Niagara Falls was when Marilyn Monroe did her, her show with uh, Joseph Cotton, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that film. Does anyone remember that? Yeah. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Marilyn, go ahead. Don't yeah, start. yeah. It's it's really cool to to be. I mean, what a, what a great time. It's almost like they planned it to be on the Halloween weekend. Halloween tomorrow. This is like your your bread and butter. I feel this is. Uh, well, Halloween's a good time for yeah. horror and horror movies, and certainly <laughs> people who come out who like to celebrate horror. That's good. If you're wearing masks and if you have your shots, yep. from what I understand, <laughs> it's an issue with a lot of people. But eh, what can you say? Are you? Uh, yeah. Gr growing up, are you? A, a, do you dress up a lot? Do you go trick or treating? Were you? Uh, you a big fan of the holiday? Oh, come on, everybody. Okay. Everybody. Many right? memorable costumes along the way that no, we. No. Like, no. Come no, on. No. No. Absolutely <laughs> not. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if the, there were costumes. I was yeah. too young. Yeah. I just remember. What was like your favorite candy that you it got? Was you candy. It, was it was always candy. A bag of candy. It was a can huge, ba a huge <laughs> bag of candy. Man, we went, went to all the little places that everybody had to, to you know, put a handful yeah. of candy to give you. We hit 25, 30 doors. Yep. So we came home with this much candy in a, in a bag. Where, where do you stand on the candy corn? Is it or you're good? Oh, great with candy corn. My, okay. mo my mother okay. likes, oh, look at it. My mother likes candy corn and, and uh, peanuts. The regular, the, um, okay. what are they called? The regular peanuts. Somebody tell me. Spanish peanuts. Spanish, you know what Spanish peanuts are? Nobody knows what Spanish peanuts are? Somebody tell me you know what Spanish peanuts are. So, this the regular peanuts, the ones, the little ones with this little, shell, you know, the little, the little peanuts that you buy. They're, they're like brown, <laughs> you know. With the, you know, they have the like the little. Anyway, she likes she like peanuts and, and candy corn mixed together. Oh. So she would mix them together, which was a great combination. So if you ever get a chance to do something and you want to have something different for as a treat, okay, mix. As for Spanish peanuts, regular Spanish peanuts, and as for candy corn, and you mix them together, and you put a bunch in your mouth, and you chew them. Great, great little snack. Got it for me. Don't worry. Uh, great. And I think a lot of people, to get into the Halloween spirit, they love watching their, those classic horror films. There's a lot of favorites that people put on every year. And I know one of those, for a lot of people in this room, myself included, Dawn of the Dead, right? <laughs> Now you've had you've had some, you know, time to you know maybe think about this over the years. But in case of an, a real zombie apocalypse, do you have a do you have a plan in place? Like, what do we, where do we go? What do we do? What do you? Who do you hang out with? Who do you call? Do you know? Oh God, no. <laughs> God, no. I'm, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do like the, like the rest of you. Probably probably do what. It, the worst thing in the world that I've waited to do and didn't, didn't want to do and just call it a night. I don't know, man. No. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, yeah. Gonna, we're going to die. Yeah, we're all going to die tree? in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to do something crazy. You know, I, you know we're going to all die. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to pray. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll, you know, I, maybe I'll go shoot my worst enemy. I don't know. Okay. You know, something, you know. Maybe Maybe, maybe screw the next door neighbor, you know? <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Hot and Trot, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I don't okay. know what I, what I do. I thought, I, thought I, was, I was kind of expecting to hear, like, grab a shovel and go to the mall, but hey, that's, that works too. I'm not grabbing okay. any shovels going to the mall, <laughs> man. I would love to do that. That'd be a perfect okay, answer. Okay, okay, I would okay, love this right. for that to happen. I would love to, to be able to do that, of well, course. But that's... That's not, no, no, no. If you're Ken's neighbor, get ready for the zombie apocalypse. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, you can. Can I ask a question? Anybody out there, it, are, is, are you in the business? Would you like to be in the business? Are you thinking of being in the business? Would you, do you, are you 
considering it? Have you been in the business? Are you writers, directors, actors, uh, or as they say, A W? Uh, no, so A M Ws. Now this is a great one for you. It's called actors. They would call women who were models who came out to L.A. who had no talent. Not me, but they, they call these people AMWs, actors, models, whatever. <laughs> so, so, but, so, so, any of you have any aspirations? Hey, Reggie, just raise your hand. Just show me some, some action here, all right? You know, I like to have these things lively. This thing, if you're not going to be a part of this, this, this thing, I can get out of here. You understand? Be part of it. I want to see you. I want to see some live. One, two. Can I have them again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you tell me, what you, we, each one of you, what, what you want to do? Real, very quickly. You, first. Go. go. Writer. Writer. Go. Editor. Editor. Go. Uh, writer. Director. Writer. Director. With somebody else over there? Uh, yeah. Writer-director. Writer-director here, too? Yes? Yeah. Uh, writer. Writer? Uh, I own, own my own company. Own your own company. Yeah. Good. Film, stills, and props. Yeah. Phil, film, and... Stills, and props. Stills, and props. Oh, wow. Over here? Writing, effects, stuff like that. Okay, wow. Effects. Okay, that's a lot of people who want to write. Oh, can I tell a story? Yeah, sure. Can, floor, may, the floor may I, is yours, man. man. Yeah, you Do just, you mind? No, this is okay. your thing. Okay, okay. I'm, since the writer's here, can I tell you guys a story about what I'm doing right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah is that okay? Everybody, everybody cool with that? Okay? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Okay. Sure, sure. okay. okay, here's the deal. I'm, I wrote a six-hour limited series it's called Addicts. It's about a school in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's historical. It's um, I can I combine the the uh, um, the it, it starts from 1922 to 1973. I take a white family and a black family through those decades. It's about the Indiana basketball. You, you know what Broadway is to New York, right? You know Broadway, New York, Broadway, Broadway. You know how New Yorkers feel. You know how the country feels about Broadway, right? Good, right? Yep, yep. The big thing, right? Well, in Indiana, basketball is the same way. Okay, Indiana feels basketball is theirs. It's like, it's like ho hockey in, Can in Canada is only played in Niagara Falls. <laughs> you understand? Everybody in Niagara Falls think we play the best hockey in the world. We know it better than anyone else. Nobody does it better than us. We produce the best players. Indiana is the same way. It's called Hoosier Basketball Hysteria. It's something about the state. It does that. Anybody that plays basketball in, 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 in pro basketball, college basketball in the United States, if you tell them you're from Indiana, they're going to say, oh boy, okay. We know what you're going to say. Okay, so that's it. So I, I, I combine uh, Hoosier ba Larry Bird from Indiana, Oscar Robertson, the big O's from Indiana, and hundreds of others. Uh, I can compare, I compare, compare. I compose Indiana Hoosier basketball hysteria, the Ku Klux Klan, and the and uh, this school, this all black school, that was forced to be uh, built by the Klan to keep white uh, black students out of the white schools. Uh, in, in Indianapolis and surrounding communities because they didn't want any more black people in the these black students in the schools. Now, the Klan in Indiana in the 1920s ruled the state. The governors, the, 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 the mayors, the city councils, the police, everybody was a Klan member. If they weren't a Klan member, they were affiliated with the Klan. For some reason, the state of Indiana took to the Klan like a duck to water. Swear, I don't know why, but it did. Not in Mississippi, wasn't Alabama, it was Indiana, okay? So I've combined these two stories, and I've, uh, with the Hoosier basketball hysteria, the Klan, this black, the white family, this, uh, this uh, 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 black family, 
through decades, decades of living in this place, and I've created this, this series. And we're pitching, well, let me just say this. There's a very famous company, for you writers, because you know what I'm talking about here. It's you know, getting it written is one thing. Now, I wrote it, you know. Come on, man, God, come on. Just writing a, a, just writing a script is bad enough. Trying to write a series. Then trying to write a synopsis instead of, or, or, you know, just putting all those things that try to, comp I had 300 and some odd pages of series, I had to compact into seven pages. You know what I mean? That, 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 I said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Just let them read the first 25 pages. If they don't get that, the hell with them. No, you got to write that. Uh. So I had to write that. And it, it, that was torturous. So writing this, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult. It's a job. So anyway, I've got this series. I sent it to Mandalay Sports Media. Now, I don't know if you know what Mandalay Sports Media is. Some of you do, maybe. It's uh, Peter Gruber's place. It's very prestigious. It's one of the top production companies in the world. A um, lot of money, deep pockets. Uh, they're supposed to, so they, I knew, I knew somebody, a, a, a executive vice president, t talked to him over the phone. He was kind enough to put it through that system. And the, the, when you put a, when you put a, for you writers, when you put your, your, your script in the system of a production company, it's their job to say no. After, if you get it in, and they read it, <laughs> it's their job to say, no, it's not for us. That's, that's basically what they're supposed to do. You understand? They say, okay, if it's, you, know, you really got to strike something. We got an excellent for story. We got good, good for two other categories, fine for structure, and recommendation to go to the next level. That's a nice compliment. It doesn't give us a green light, but it's a nice compliment. When I get back, I'm pitching to every, I'm going to pitch it to um, AFM. I'll start with the AFM November 1st, American Film Market for you, you writers. That, you guys know, writers know American Film Market, right? Yeah, yeah writers, you know? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay, okay. But give me, you know, talk to me. You know, I ask you a question, writers, open your big mouths. You're writers, for Christ's sake. Yes. Well, you, go, you wouldn't be at the American Film Market. I want to know if you know about it. If you don't know about it, I want to tell you. Because I, you, you, this is your career. So I'm going to pitch to the American Film Market on, on November 1st to November 5th. I'll be pitching for every, probably, probably, until then, from November 5th until Thanksgiving, I'll be pitching every day to major production companies in, the, in Hollywood this story. Because we know if we get it on enough desk, enough people say they're going to look at it, the Bible and our first episode, that they're going to give us the same thing that Mandalay gave us. They're not, they may not be able to do it. They may not, have, they may not want to do it. They may not, have the, may not be in their... their, their their scheduling or what, what they, they, they plan on doing and their, their philosophy at this point, but they're not going to be sorry that they read it. They're going to find an interesting, interesting read. If we get it on enough tape desk, we'll get somebody to pick it up. At least they're going to take us seriously. So that's what it is. So for writers, I tell you this story for one reason, because it is a, it's a game of meeting each challenge that they give you and adjusting your, your, your product and making sure that you stay, that it's, 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 it depends on you. You can't depend on anyone else. It depends on you to get it out there, it depends on you to push it, it depends on you to, to edit it, it depends on you to work with people who are going to really work with you, not people who are going to tell you a great line. We've had people 
come to me and talk to me and say, oh, Ken, and the, the line of stuff that they were saying was so beautifully at, I mean, get thought of. I mean, this this just, just pouring out, oh, well, this guy's going to lead us to Bahala. I mean, this guy, is, this is, we're, 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 we're the right people here. They did nothing. They sat there and waited and, to see what I was going to do. And, if they, and when they sat there, or they sat there and still gave me a line of stuff, you know, every week I talked to them, but they still produced nothing. You writers, you need nobody like that around you. When you say move, when you know that you've got a good product, when your product has been edited and rewritten and your drafts have been rewritten and you've got a draft that you're really happy about, you love, you know it's good, people that you trust and know are going to tell you the truth, say this is really, really good, then don't let anyone around you that's not going to move you forward. If they say on Tuesday we're going to have this, don't let them come back and say uh, we're going to have that next month or three years from now. Just be careful because they are there. People will sit there and try to see who you have and see if they can get a job. <laughs> you know, we had one guy with us, great resume, and we turned him on to somebody that he was supposed to help us arrange to do certain things, to, you know. And he sent them an email, and he sent an email, and we looked at the email, and it was damn near his resume. His resume. Our product, look, his resume. I said, no, that's not how you do things. And who do you think you're fooling? You're climbing on our backs to see if you can get you a job with somebody else if it's an important contact. Writers, be careful. Editors, if you're working for somebody, my best advice to give to any of you and to give all of you in life is to make sure that whoever you're talking to is going to produce whatever they're saying on, in a timely manner and we've got two people. We sent the non-disclosures to, this is interesting, this is so good. Wait, let me get to this. this is, we sent non-disclosures to, I got, I got cousins who are, you know, big willers and dealers, you know, box, they own companies and lawyers and ran for governor, for mayorship. They, they're impressive people. And some of them are good, and some of them don't do very much, in my, my, my opinion, but they, they, they're impressive. Anyway, so they brought some people. These two people were from this famous comic, uh, and, and uh, these people have contacts to a, a streaming network, supposedly. And I met somebody at a convention, and she was a professor at a university. And I told her the story while we were talking because she was so, we were talking about things and she was standing in front of my table and she was so interesting to talk to. So I started talking to her about what I was doing. And so of course this addicts thing came up. I started talking to her and she was telling me, and she said, and then she told me that she had two brothers who worked in the industry in Hollywood. You know, they didn't do what I'm looking for necessarily, but they'd been working in the industry on very, uh, very important projects. And I'm not going to say in what, what positions they were in. Not, certainly not positions that I, they weren't producers, they weren't directors, but they worked significantly and had connections in Hollywood. I said, okay, and we talked, we talked, and we exchanged things, and I said, and I have a cousin that has a, a um, uh, his daughter is second in charge uh, under the guy of a famous uh, art gallery in Chicago, the most famous art gallery in Chicago, all right? So I kind of told her, well, listen, if your guys, your brothers can help me, maybe, and your guys, and your brothers want to get some stuff that they are out, I said, maybe I'll introduce them to my art guy. So we kind of said, yeah, we'll kind of work together on that. In the meantime, my other cousin, another cousin, no, the cousin with the art gallery, the daughter. Anyway, he had these other people that were 
knew this streaming network. So we sent them non-disclosures to the streaming network guys. The guys were going to do some streaming networks. We sent non-disclosures so we could send them the package to the two from the girl from the, from the uh, university, the professor. The people from the university girls, her, her brothers, sent back the non-disclosure the next day, signed. The people that had the connection that my cousin was going to hook me up with got the non-disclosures before these guys did, and we get to see them. That's the difference. If you ask me, I want to deal with these people. These are the people I want to play ball with. I don't want to play ball with these guys. They haven't sent back the non-disclosure, which they should have sent back. It's a non-disclosure. They didn't have to ask for the, the package yet. They didn't have to read it. Just sign it and show that you are alive, <laughs> thinking, blood's flowing. <laughs> you understand? So no, these guys sent back. Since then, they uh, sent the nice notes told me when they would be able to read the package when it came. They got the package. We sent it to them. They said we'll be able to read it. I'm, I'm next week, my son's coming in, da 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 flying in. I'm spending some time with him, but I will get to it right afterward. I've heard great things about it, da 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 The other one said, it's nice to talk to you, da 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 He sent it to two brothers. They both sent some nice, very nice. The sister is class. The brothers are class. Their, their response was class and in time. This over here, I don't know what it is, because I have no non-disclosure. Not only that, we were supposed to have a meeting. Uh, we didn't have the meeting, Zoom meeting, because they had something to do. They had to close down and sit down. I don't want this. You know, I don't want this over here. I may have to deal with it, until, you know, so, but if, 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 I bet, if I have anything to bet my, my marbles on, I'm betting on these guys here taking my, pro, my project to, put, to heads of development of different uh, uh, studios and production companies in Los Angeles. And I know that's in good hands. So my, my suggestions, my wish, and my advice to you guys is to listen to what I've just said and remember it. Don't waste your time and don't let anybody waste a second of your time. It's too important, especially you writers, you guys who are trying to get out there. It's a hard enough business. And for, for you people that are not in this business, you're doing something else, it's a hard enough business, it's a hard enough life to be wasted on people who are not going to be in on time you know whatever you're doing whatever you're doing in life doesn't matter if you're writing what if you're driving a truck or something what are you doing carrying mail you in the office developing your draft or whatever if they're not those these kind of people don't you're wasting your time you're wasting your time Anyway, that's it. Yeah, so that's the question. Oh, thanks so much. We, uh, I know we have a few uh, audience. My mic's not even on, is it? Uh, we have some. Oh, there we go. Oh, turned on. Pearl. Wow, oh, look at that. I think I said something. It didn't work. Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, I know many people in the audience have questions. So think of your questions. We have time for a couple of them. But before uh, we we do jump to questions, uh, my question regarding what you were talking about with your, you know, your your project. You have the story idea, and you decide it's a mini series. What, what helps sculpt that rather, you know, why, why not a film? Why not a, a series? Why, why, why fall on miniseries? Because I, you know, it started out as, as supposed to be a, 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 a funny thing because people kept, I was, this is so long a story, we don't have time, I can't tell you this. It's just crazy because it's a the great story. Too long. It's okay, a great, great, no, 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 it's a great story, guys. It's such a great story, but we don't have time. 
God, let me just let me just condense it. All right. I'll just say that I started out trying to just write something just to shut somebody up. You know, all right. It, you know, you know, okay, there. You know, <laughs> you know, funny Christmas present, blah blah blah. Leave it alone. All right. All of a sudden, I find out that they say that's one of the best scripts we ever read. Blah, 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 blah. I said, what? And so I started to try to write the story, you know, get a little more into the story. And I found I could not stop. I couldn't stop to tell the story. I had to tell the story. See, I'm dealing with history. Yeah. This, sto this story, this, this, this school was, was what the, the Klan met in 1922 to plan to, 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 to formulate the plans and to com confirm the plans to, to build the school. 1927, it opened. 1940s, 1930s, they won the championship, 1950s. Oscar Robertson was like, I mean, this one, you know, we go into World War II, we go into the, 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 um, the um, oh God, the, um, the New Deal, the New Deal. What was his name, Rockefeller? Rockefeller, Rockefeller? Wasn't there, wasn't there, wasn't there, wasn't there, Roosevelt, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, my daughter, my daughter, so many of my ancient old, Roosevelt the era, the era, we go through that, we go through the, the 60s, and then, and then the 70s, so eventually I had all of these episodes that I had to, in, to, in order to tell this story, and if I have, if they do pick it up, if I'm lucky if they pick it up, God blesses me, I'm going to have there's so much more because there's so much fertile ground that I still can tap into. So I could probably stretch these episodes a little, you know, because I had trouble make, I, my first episode is two hours long, and the rest of them are an hour long, and I had trouble squeezing these things together, you know, without going over the episode limit, you know, in terms of time. And I'm gonna, if I have the chance, I will, you know, I will stretch it out a little more. So it could be more than a six hour limited series, you know. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't do it in, in one, one script. It's, it, it, it's just, I couldn't phantom it because it's yeah. just, it's just, there's so much history in this school, there's so much history in the state. I, I, the, the Klan, I mean, the head of the Klan, if, if you look at the History Channel, I don't know if you get it in Canada, but the History Channel in the United States sometimes does something on the Klan. You know, they do things on history, da, 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 da. occasionally they'll come to the Klan every six months or something, you know, every, uh, once a year. They'll talk about the Klan, and then they will give a little section for Indiana. And it's because there was a guy in Indiana, a Grand Dragon or whatever they call the Imperial Clacker, whatever the hell he is. You know, they, they had, this guy was, was quite famous for, you know, generating Klan people and making, making it big. And he killed this woman uh, through rough sex, biting her and, you know, that kind of stuff. And he, he killed her, you know, killed this woman. And so that was, that was kind of, you know, what, what got in the way of Indiana. But, but he ruled the Klan, and they, the Klan, and he was responsible at that point for the, the school being built, for all those Klan memberships, for every third. It's, it's said that every third white male in Indiana was a Klan member in the state. How can I put all of this information in one script? You know? Addicts has a history of not only uh, 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 um, a history of accomplishments scholastically, but also athletically. You understand? And fighting all these battles. You know? So how do I do that? How do I bring Hoosier basketball hysteria, which is a crazy, wild, nut that's See, there, there are two movies that are wrote, known as the greatest sports movies in television, uh, in film. One is Hoosiers. Slapshot. Right? And no, 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 no. <laughs> I wish it was. No, I, no you wish it was. The, the, one, one's Hoosiers, the other is Rudy. One in, in, one in, both of them in Indiana. You understand? So, you know, how do I encompass all of this, this fertile ground into, you know, one little script? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Okay, well, audience questions. We have time for a couple of you guys, so let's start. Let's go to you, sir. You're first, so go ahead. What is your question? Uh, obviously, Dawn is probably one of the greatest horror movies ever made, but your role and your, uh, <clears throat> the, the whole scene between you and Sid Hay in the bar, um, the chemistry between you two was absolutely phenomenal. If he hadn't have unfortunately passed, 
You were saying devil's rejects. Yes, sir. I thought you said dawn. I was going to say. No, no, no. Dawn, dawn is what it is. Oh, but, but you're saying devil's rejects. Wrote Ro- 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 with Sid Haig. In the bar. Phenomenal. Yeah. And the chemistry was added as well. Yeah, Do you yeah. You know, we talked about that, Sid and I. And it was always something we wanted to do. You know, yeah, we should do this, we should do that. But, you know, nobody ever... There's a lot of talk in Hollywood about doing things together. There, the time that it... Making it happen, financing. People getting together, the right people, putting the package together, getting the production up and running. That is another deal. And a lot of times, it, 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 it just, it takes five years sometimes to get, and, and maybe 10 or 20 years to get a film made. You know, so Sid and I would talk about it, but there was nobody behind us generating that. And I'm not sure, you know, you, like I said, I was kind of, I didn't know, I just, I, I didn't know. I should have known, but I didn't know, because I'm an actor and I just relied on that. But I didn't know that you had to do so much yourself, you know, that you had to create. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really that aware. I should have been. I mean, many people are, many people do. I didn't. And I don't think Sid did either. And so I think we wanted to. But I don't think we had a clue as to how to do it or how to get it done, quite frankly. So, you know, it would be nice if we had had somebody had to, you know, put a little dust on us and we would have woken up and said, oh, this is the way we can do this. We can do it this way and we can get it done. You could have been the Jack Lemmon we, we could, we could have, We could have done some really interesting stuff, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks so much, man. And we had a question, yeah, in the middle there. Go to the, yeah, the mask, and then we'll go to the back after. So go ahead. Yeah, right there. Yep, yeah, you, right left of the aisle, yep. Uh, I'm really a fan of your work in From Beyond. Oh. And I'm asking, do you have any stories of working with the late, great Stuart Gordon? And secondly, was Barbara Crampton self-aware of what she was wearing in her s and <laughs> Oh, From Beyond was a strange film. And uh, the only thing I can say about Stuart Gordon, I can tell you something very, we, he, owes, he owed me, I think, oh, 3,000, 4,000 lira, because he told me that was, because we had a dispute about what was in the script. And I said, There's, no, the, word, the line is da 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 da, and he said, no, that's not the line. And I proved to him it was a line, and so I had him for 3,000 lira. So, um, it, um, it's not, it's, it, it, it was a strange, it was a strange situation, not a, not a film I like talking about. I had some tragic things happen to me during that period of that film in my life. Um, there were some strange things that went on with not only Barbara, but also with Ted, anybody know the, I can't think of his last name that played Pretorius. Can you think of his name that played Pretorius? Ted, I want to say Ted Lang, but it's, that's not him, that's a black guy. Ted something, Ted, I can't think of Ted's name. Anyway, he's, he's no longer with us. But I'll just give you an example, and then I'm going to close on that, that when we move to something else, because I really don't like discussing this, this, this film. Um, he was in the prosthetics that he wore, that Pretorius thing, that, that thing growing out of him, for a full day. And he was no further away than these two people are from me right now. And Barbara and Jeffrey. And he had nothing on stripped naked for a full day. I saw no reason for that. I saw no reason for it. I thought it was, there was no, nobody was filming. 
that part. There was nothing going on. He was just made to stand there in the nude for four, for four hours. You know, so that's all I'll say about that. Okay, next all right, question. Yeah, back there, and we'll go we'll jump over to you, but we'll go to you first. So go ahead, what is your question? Yep, you're right there, yep. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm sorry. See, it, that's one thing that that <laughs> it's like two people standing on the corner and they see the same accident, and each of them comes up with a different story. You know what I mean? And I, I, I there's several films that I've had, and I, I have, you know, this is what happened: Texas Chainsaw, Halloween to mention a few, that, that I thought that certain things happened for a certain reason and I heard someone else say, no, it didn't happen for that reason and, and it was totally different. And so I, I'm going, well, what, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. But anyway, we, George came up to me and said, you know, what do you think? Good, 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 good uh, ending, bad ending, what do we do? Something like that, something to that, I'm paraphrasing here. You know, do we shoot a bad, bad ending, a good ending? You know, do we hold on to this? And I think I said, you know, let's have a good ending, you know? Let's have something that they can, you know, we've had so much carnage. Or some, some, it, it, some, the conversation went like that. And this was just before we shot me in that room with the pistol, right? And, and then, uh, we, we went, went from there. I think, I don't think there was, I think that, I think that they had pretty much decided on her not being killed, Galen, because they tested the dummy and that kind of thing. I think it was, I think, I think that's how we decided it. I'm, I, somebody else may tell you something different I don't know, but as, as I can re recall that night, you know, uh, talking about it, that that's what happened. We decided not to do it, that we, we, it would be better to just to have, a, have an up, up ending, up, uplifting I just, ending. I uh, wonder, just because Romero's work is usually so bleak, you know? Yeah. It just struck me as an exception. You know, and it, it, that, that moment of him cho choosing not to help and choosing to live. I, I guess, I guess it did. Maybe, maybe it did. Maybe George had, maybe it was George's thought, and he just wanted to confirm with me that I was okay with that. You know, maybe it was his, maybe, maybe it, it originated from George, and just he wanted to see if I was okay, if I could make the change, if we could, you know, if uh, just to notify me and see, if, you know, I don't know, and I kind of agreed with him. I'm, I'm not going to take credit that it was my brilliant idea. You know, but I, I think that um, I, I think that I think it was the right move, and I think I think it worked well. You know, and I think I think it was the right move. I I, I just don't see us. I don't see, I don't see George. He had a choice of this, and he did it with Dwayne Jones, which was which was effective as hell. But what a shock to everyone when Dwayne got it right here in Night of the Living Dead. Everyone thought he was going to live. He was the hero. He did that already. So now I'm going to blow my brains out, commit suicide. I mean, what's left now? You know? Then, then he would have to probably use that dummy to put her head in the, in the blades and kill her. Then what's left? You know, maybe, maybe he wanted to... Change. I think it was whoever thought of it, it was a good change. <laughs> just take the credit. We'll just give you the credit for okay. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, last question right by the aisle. Go ahead. What is your question? So, uh, big fan of your work, by the way. What was the thing that you worked for? What was it like before you were involved with the documentary? 
I can probably. Yeah, pro sorry, we, yeah, I missed that too. Um, what was your life before you became the man we know and love today? Uh, what was your life before you became the man we know and love? Is that what your question is? Yeah. Uh, oh my God, yeah. I was. <laughs> I I was. I was in the civil rights movement before. Believe it or not, I was in New York. It was in the height of the. Um, I arrived in New York. This is going to be shock a lot of you, but so be it. <laughs> I arrived in New York. Two years or year two, the year two years after Malcolm was killed and assassinated. I knew the people at CORE, SNCC, Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee, NAACP, um, the uh, Black Panthers, the um, Muslims, um, the, uh, oh, I remember, um, He's on, he's, on, he's on television now. Reverend Al Sharpton used to be on 125th Street and 7th Avenue on a, uh, on a ladder with a, with a bullhorn trying to get people to listen to him talk. <laughs> so we were, it was a time with the Urban League. I, was, I, was, I worked for the Urban League for a while. It was a time when everybody was trying to find out an answer for the questions of racial, um, the racial question in this country. And as a young black man, I was part of that. And I was one of the foot soldiers. I was a member of a place called the National Black Theater, which we didn't do very much theater, but we were damn sure about black pride and that kind of stuff. And um, we were, it was an interesting time. It was an interesting time. I met great people. I knew all the poets, all the, um, people who were important to, to that, that time of history. They all came through New York. They all came through Harlem. I was there, you know. Dwayne Jones was part of it. He was part of the same people. We, didn't, we were in the same organizations. We would we see each other every day, or every other day, a couple of days, you know, a couple of days a week. I mean, that's who we were, I mean, we were, we, if you were African American, you were fighting for, for, for your survival, for the survival of your, 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 your people, and, 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 and it was a time of awareness of that, you know? I mean, you didn't have that before. I mean, when we, we were, Martin Luther King was doing the civil rights marches everywhere, you understand? He was, I mean, these, this was a time for, for that, that kind of, that kind of movement, and we were part of it. I, how could I not be? You know, I carried that into my role as Peter. Not only that, but also some of the people who had shaped me when I was a, a young boy in, um, in Indianapolis, Indiana, and in Lockville Gardens, and, and some of the strong individuals that, that, that were strong men to me. So I, I kind of fashioned my role for Peter I, from that and from the the things that I, I, I had picked up um, from uh, people like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, Stokely Carmichael, Miriam McKeeba, you know, um, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer down in Alabama, this great, great, Edgar, Edgar, Mega Evers, these, these great civil rights people. I just, you know, you know, I had to stand up, I stood up, and when I, got Dawn of the Dead, and when I turned into acting, I became an actor, and got Dawn of the Dead, and I, I brought that to that role. I said, I'm a strong black man, and I'm going to be surrounded by people who are saying some pretty foul things about uh, uh, people of color, and a lot of white guys and me. So <laughs> I'm going to be prepared. And that's how I approached the role. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. I was a hero. I was going to be a hero. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, I had to be. I represented a lot. So that's, I mean, I may shock and amaze you, but I'm Joe Frazier.
<laughs> I think it's a great note to end on. Everyone, give it up for Ken Corey, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And listen, thank you. And please be healthy, be safe. And as I do when I take pictures with people, that kind of thing, be, be for victory that we get through this pandemic. Be for victory that we have our lives returned to normal.